Come in. I can't see it. Anyway. It's completely like... Really Got it. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Well, welcome to the bunker. This is where the magic happens. As you can see, I'm now surrounded by coronavirus. Corona beer. We're a little bit outgunned right now. We're missing proper masks. These are N95 masks. They're special masks that I wear when I dress up like uh, a creature from outer space to go see a patient that I think has coronavirus. These are my pretty little blue gloves. I hope you like blue, right? So uh, let's cover up these viruses a little bit with, with this stuff because I, I'm tired of, of seeing these. All right, we'll, we'll get rid of some of these and we'll just get rid of some of those. By the way, by the way, that's not the antidote to coronavirus. So these are times for clear thinking. So, you know, uh, limit the ingestion, right? Okay. So we still have this guy around. Remember, we did an interview with uh, my pump. There's less of it now than there was before because we've been using it. So welcome back. I'm Dr. Oscar Hernandez, board certified internist and pediatrician. And like I say, this is the bunker. This is where the magic happens because I'm on the front line of uh, the attack against coronavirus. And there's not a whole lot we can do uh, to attack coronavirus, but there are many things we can do in terms of prevention. We're gonna go through them again. We, we did uh, one of these little videos a couple of weeks ago, and the situation was different than it is now. I think if you remember, last week we had one bottle on my desk and of course now we got we got all these bottles and these these represent coronavirus and and uh, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy coronavir and all that stuff that's not what this is about this is just a prop because I'm trying to prove a point we think local we think global we act local right so let's look at some of the numbers as of today the day of this taping which is March 17 of the year 2020 Overall, we've had about 186,000 cases of coronavirus worldwide and about 7,000 deaths. In the state of Florida, we have about 100 cases of coronavirus. We've had four deaths as of today. And in the Dade County area in Miami, where I'm doing this program, we've had about 23 cases of coronavirus. So far, no deaths. So those are the global and the local numbers. Uh, the reason we're doing this program today is because my approach to this is very different than it was two weeks ago. On uh, last Friday, uh, I gave a little talk before a group of people uh, who invited me to speak about coronavirus. And we had, at that time, uh, about uh, three cases of deaths in Florida, and we had in Miami one documented case of coronavirus. I woke up the following day, Saturday morning, and we had 13 cases of coronavirus. Now we're up to at least 23. The numbers might be a little different at the time of this taping. They may be a, a, a little higher. The point is that, you know, this is growing and growing and growing. Uh, if you go uh, to look at the graphs of how coronavirus is growing overall in the world and in the United States, uh, and you look at the, at the curve, it, it's not going up in a in a in a in a normal slope it's actually taking off like a rocket now at some point we're going to stop this rocket right so either because the temperatures become warmer and we're doing a, a lot of things locally in terms of self-isolation decreasing crowds and so on uh, it, the numbers are going to stop at some point and and we're taking action so we're going to talk about the things that we can do again to protect ourselves against coronavirus They've changed a little bit since the first time I talked about this, but overall, uh, they're, they're the same. Before that, I'm going to talk again about symptoms. Uh, the, the phone won't stop ringing off the hook around here, right? Everybody wants to be tested. Let me tell you something, folks. We cannot test everybody who wants to be tested. Uh, at best, right now, as of this day, we've got about 8 million testing kits. The population of the United States is about 318 uh, million people. So there's no way we can test everybody. So who do we save this little test kit for? The one that I just opened up. 
By the way, if you don't know what a test kit looks like, this is what it looks like. There's nothing funky or weird about it. If you have symptoms and qualify for testing, somebody will go to you with a little bottle that kind of looks like this. Hopefully they'll open this right, right near where you are. A little bottle that kind of looks like that. And they'll take this little swab. You really can't see it well. I don't want to open it because I don't have a million of these kits. As soon as I open this one, it would be useful. But let me describe it for you. It's got a little handle over here and there's a very, very tiny little metal shaft. And on the edge is something that kind of looks like a Q-tip, but it's very, very small. And this is meant to swab in the back of your throat and to put down into your nose. When we do that, we ask you to breathe in, inhale, and we slip it in there. People don't gag from this generally. You know, sometimes you do a throat swab on a patient who maybe has a sore throat and they wind up uh, gabby, gagging or gasping. This generally doesn't happen with this. And if it does, we take it out. We got our sample. We go to the other nose. We do the same thing. You can do it in one. It's probably better if you do it in both. And then we take this and we put it in a special container and we send it off to the lab. In the state of Florida, you can get this test done at no cost. And if I had to pay for this test, it would cost me just to get this kit and have it processed about $200. Most insurance is paying for it. I know that the government is assuring everybody that they can get a test. I don't know if that means that they can get a test at the doctor's office or they can go to one of these drive-through testing areas. It doesn't make any difference, but please fulfill criteria. What are the criteria that make your doctor think that you really do need this or that you qualify to go through a drive-through center? Well, you have to have cough, shortness of breath, and fever. Again, from my first video, for me, a fever is over 101. It is best if we have this fever documented, but in my area, it no longer needs to be documented. If a patient says they had a fever or they felt febrile, that's good enough. Please, folks, don't abuse that. If you really didn't have a fever, if you didn't feel febrile, don't go saying that you were. We're just gonna run out of these kids before you know it. How fast do we get the results? About 48 hours from a state lab, about three to four days from a commercial lab like Quest or LabCorp. Those are the ones that we generally process through your insurance. What do we do in the meantime if we decided that you did have these symptoms that we said, and maybe in addition that you were in contact with somebody who had known coronavirus and had symptoms, or somebody who went to an endemic area, like uh, again, we mentioned uh, India, Iran, uh, uh, Hong Kong, China, all these places, right? Uh, well, and, and now in Miami, because the Miami area where I'm at is an outbreak area, so you no longer have to have traveled somewhere, been on a cruise ship. Now, just by being in the Miami area, you would qualify because of the outbreak status that we have in this area. So you had those symptoms, you had these contacts, or maybe you just had the symptoms and no contacts that are known because in my area we now have community outbreak and your doctor says, okay, let's do it. Let's swab the nose, let's swab, swab, swab the, the, the throat. And what do we do now? Well, we isolate you or we should, you should self isolate. If you're very sick, we're going to call rescue. They're going to come in special equipment because we're going to advise them that we have somebody that we think has coronavirus. Uh, and if you look very sick, when we see you, then you're going to go to the hospital and we're going to call uh, rescue for you. If you're in our office, your doctor may have a different approach to this. I'm describing my approach. If you're not looking that sick, I'll probably put you on something against flu because maybe you just have the flu. Maybe I'll prescribe something, uh, some antibiotic or something just in case you have another cause, uh, sinusitis or, or another respiratory tract infection that responds to an antibiotic. This is decided on a case-by-case -case basis and we'll send you home to isolate yourself and we'll give you one of these masks. We'll give you two, two or three of them, right? If you are outside your isolation area, which should be your bedroom, specifically one hopefully that has access to a bathroom with towels and things that only you use, and you're going to use one of these in case you have to go outside of your area for a while, and we do this maybe for two or three days until our test result comes back. If you're tested positive, you're going to stay there for a while 
until your doctor tells you that you no longer have to be there and there are criteria that we use to suspend isolation. If you want to go outside to the back porch, you want to go in your garden, you want to look around, that's fine so long as there are people who are not around you. You need to be making sure that the areas that you touch every so often get wiped down with disinfectant. Now we're running out of disinfectant, so I want you to remember this. The five to one rule. The five to one rule. You can prepare your own disinfectant using Clorox. Even though we're running out of Clorox on the shelves in some areas, most people have Clorox or bleach at home. They've used it for uh, laundering their clothes or whatever. Five tablespoons of Clorox to one gallon of water will make a good disinfectant. Where did I find this? At the most reliable site for coronavirus information that exists on the surface of the planet, coronavirus.gov. There are a million sources of information and disinformation. Think of this, coronavirus.gov. You want the skinny? That's where you go. You want the hype? You might go somewhere else. You want the real thing? Coronavirus.gov. By the way, how do we avoid all this stuff, right? Because we've talked about if you have symptoms and the testing and the turnaround time and isolation, because these are things that we didn't talk about before in our previous video. But the reason I'm talking about them uh, now is because they're newer things. What other new thing has come around? This is the number 10 rule, right? We talked about the five and one. Uh, on the previous video, we talked about uh, the two and the zero, 20 seconds. That's how long you should be washing your hands. But uh, the 10 person rule is that you should avoid congregating with more than 10 people at a time. Of course, if somebody there tells you that they've been coughing and have a fever, they shouldn't be part of that 10 person uh, group. How do we avoid coronavirus? Well, the 10 person group, wiping down our surfaces as we would uh, if you were in, in, in home isolation. Uh, what surfaces do we need to wipe down? Wipe down your cell phone, wipe down your keys, Wipe down your office phone if you have one. Wipe down surfaces. Nobody's going to be scrubbing the walls or getting on, on their feet and scrubbing the rug. That's not what we need to wipe down. We need to wipe down surfaces where people touch. Those are the things that we want to be wiping down. By the way, if you are in isolation, avoid pets because pets can be vectors for this disease. It's not the common vector, it's not the number one thing. Air droplet, person to person, is the way that this thing spreads. If you've been hoarding toilet paper, please stop that. Stop hoarding toilet paper. This has very few gastrointestinal manifestations. Occasionally, you may have some nausea, you may have some diarrhea, but other people, in fact, everybody, pretty much needs toilet paper, and it's hard to find, at least in my area. My wife had to run out in the morning at seven in the morning for the opening of the uh, local supermarket Publix where she goes to, and uh, there she found uh, one roll of toilet paper, well, one, one six pack, and that's all that they were giving out person by person, stop doing that. It's insane. It doesn't, it doesn't have any sense to it. Should you wind up at your, hosp at your doctor or hospital uh, to be evaluated because you, you have symptoms, uh, you will be using an N95 mask as a physician. These masks are not really that useful for physicians or people who are coming to evaluate you. They are useful in preventing you putting out droplets into the air that have coronavirus, right? Uh, these masks are a little different. They protect the wearer from inhaling your coronavirus uh, uh, droplets that might be in the air. So we as investigators or as physicians, when we are go to approach a patient that we really think has coronavirus, we will wear our gloves, we will wear our gown, we will wear this, we will wear goggles that are somewhere around here, and we will look like we're creatures from outer space, but we're not. Don't be afraid. We're just trying to help you and keep ourselves uh, well, we talked about the five-in-one rule. Remember my little friend, the disinfectant? Please have it nearby. If you're a person that's touching other people, often do this, uh, you know, as soon as you touch somebody else. If you're not, do it at least three or four times a day. You don't have this, that's fine. You can go and uh, wash your hands for 20 seconds, uh, consistently rubbing hard, as we've mentioned on our previous video. Well, so we want to keep ourselves safe. We want to avoid large groups. We want to wipe down our surfaces. We want to know the basics about isolation. We want to know where to go get detailed information that I can't possibly give you in these short videos, and that's coronavirus.gov. Look at the enemy. 
right? It's all around. But in the middle of this confusion, we will make a space for ourselves as a community and a nation. And this will come to an end. And this will come under control. And we can go back and have dinner at the restaurant and go to the theaters and go to the play and go to the ball games and go back to our karate classes and our Pilates and our yoga and whatever it is, we will do it. There will be an end to this and we will win. God willing, we will win, but it requires everybody to pull together as a team. So if you're not on the team, get on the team. And if you're on the team, go coach someone who isn't on the team because we need everybody on board with this. We're just going to hold our breath. We're going to hunker down. We're going to live like hobbits if we have to for the next month or two or whatever long it takes. This will come to an end. So look up and have faith. That's all I have for you today. We'll be back next week.